everyone, and thank you for attending today's session. Uh, we're very happy to have our Maestro Designer Series here with our interactive workflow, and we have Yaron for today's session. Um, let's go ahead and get started here. So if you're following us on the social feeds, please let us know where you're watching us from. We'd love to give you a shout out. Um, if you're watching us on Zoom, go ahead and enter that in the Q&A field and we will know that our system is working. Uh, also, you can raise your hand if you're in Zoom and we can take care of any issues. Uh, just to let y'all know, we're recording these sessions so that we can post them back to avid.com at a later time. And I know that Yaron has a lot to cover in today's session, but we're very happy to have with him, have him with us again for a great graphic session today. So Yaron, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to you. All right. Thank you, Don. Hi, everybody. Uh, today we are going to go over the interactive workflow. Uh, we're actually going to understand what it is, how we can do it, how we can game. Um, we're going to understand what are triggers. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of refreshal on internal connection and math function. If you haven't seen our older sessions, you can go back and see them in a deeper understanding. We're going to build the game together, and then we're going to see some cool examples. So let's jump uh, directly into our game. So uh, we're going to have this game. So we have a old fashioned game, which we can have a shoot this space. And that's just, just for fun. We're going to blow it up again. And we blew up the spaceship again. So this is what we are actually going to do today. Uh, before that, we're going to understand what is interactive. So interactive is basically give us the ability for a human being, or if we're in a studio, the talent, to interact with our video wall or iPad application or anything that we can control and make our broadcast a lot easier and funner to, to use. So um, we can get uh, the anchor can play with it for weather, uh, for sports game, and a lot more very interesting um, type of um, broadcast that we can we can use it for. So a little bit about the interaction itself. The interaction is basically I can put an interaction on every object inside my scene. And I can use a few manipulation in order to make it work. Um, the manipulation can be a uh, can tap or can drag. The can tap will give us the ability to tap on that specific uh, object. For example, I have this uh, reset button. So it's basically a rectangle, like you can see on my right side of the screen here. And I can use the can tap on it. I can use the can drag, which means I can drag this object around, or I can do can hold. Those manipulations can also use a different one for um, on tap. So when I'm tapping it, when I do finger up or finger down, finger up meaning when I'm pressing it, finger down when I'm um, releasing it. And also I can decide that uh, that specific manipulator can be fixed on screen or I can do uh, on screen, which means that I can move it. I can decide if I want to move it horizontal, vertical, or both horizontal and vertical. Or on a grid, if I have a grid object, I can put it on a grid and that's how it's going to work. So those are uh, how the type of manipulation that we have. Um, so, a little uh, 
trigger window. So if I'll press on it, I can see here I have uh, multiple types of triggers. I'm going to open up a new scene just so we'll get everything fresh and nicely. So our trigger here, I have the event. The event is um, what will cause uh, that event to trigger the trigger. So we have stuff like animation time when we send an export. In our case, we're going to use interaction, but we're going to use other triggers as well. Change uh, the And if we have a countdown object, we can use the countdown. Now, the action is what will happen if this trigger uh, was triggered. For example, if I put on the export, so when a specific export is triggered, I can do play animation, change uh, animated value, run set value, I can use the illustrator or run the ticker. You're on. Sorry, I don't yeah. mean to interrupt, um, but your audio is breaking up a bit. Okay, I'm going to see if I can. All right, let me know if it does it again. Um, hopefully, it's not just my line that is a bit dodgy. So, you hear me well now? Yes, we're hearing you. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, so those were basically our basic triggers. We're going to see a lot more of them when we're going to continue with our uh, session. The other thing that I want to go over are internal connections. Now, internal connections are just going to be a little refresher to whoever saw the previous uh, Let's say the rectangle, I can connect it to the for the Y and those will fix together uh, so they are internally connected. Um, and a little bit about math function. Again, this is just a refresher, so we will remember what they are. Every object, I can set up a math function to it. Every property, technically, uh, which have the action box, I can create uh, math functions. The math functions are, uh, by default, A plus E plus I. A stands for our animation, E for the exports, and I for the internal connection. Combining them will give us a manipulated uh, object on our, um, on our specific value. So let's jump directly into the game, see how we build it from almost from scratch. Since we are a little bit short of time and I don't have uh, two hours to go over all the animation and how I built each object, well, I just have a clear game here so we can take a look and continue directly with our all of our objects are built. So let's quickly go on how this game is built. I have my um, my little laser here. This laser gun, um, it's I had to do a little bit change uh, to change the uh, position. I will go through why the position is changed when we'll get to it. We have the gun itself, we have uh, the laser fire, we have uh, the ship exploding, all the parts of the ship. So let's run those animation. I have my laser animation. Uh, technically, just fires the laser. I have my ship descending. So I have my ship descending. And I also have the U win. So it's give me the animation uh, U win just for knowing that we have shot the ship completely. So 
Uh, let's go now step by step and understand exactly what I've, how we've built it. The first thing that I need to do, I'm going to uh, connect a few parameters into um, my dummy here. I have here a dummy that I called um, uh, win helper. The win helper will basically do a small calculation. My, uh, the laser itself. So I'm going to take this uh, laser uh, gun. I'm going to take the um, X position and I'm going to do out connection from the position here. And I'm going to do in connection into the helper's visibility. So I'm going to do in connection to that and do connect. And that will be my first connection. My second connection will be the laser actually firing. So I'm going to take the uh, laser fire and I'm going to use the Y connection. Um, that's in order to actually establish the Y position of the, of the laser. So I'm going to do out connection from here. And since I already selected the wing helper, I don't have to select it again. I just need to do connect and it will connect me to the uh, wind helper. As you can see right now with the interaction, you can see that it has the interaction name changes. And the first one was I and the second one was I1. This is going to be relevant where we're going to do the math function in order to make it work. So the order is very important in order to keep the right uh, numbers of I1, I2 and so on. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're going to connect our ship position. So we're going to go to our uh, spaceship group and I'm going to connect first thing, the, um, the X position for the spaceship. So again, out connection and we'll connect it to the visibility. And now I'm going to do the Y position, out connection and connect. And right now you can see I have the X, Y, uh, the X for the laser, the Y for the, sorry, the X for the gun, Y for the laser, and X and Y position of the spaceship. So those are the connections that I'm going to do. Um, the next step, I'm actually going to connect this wind helper into uh, our target aim, because this is where it actually is going to be happening, and we will see why I'm doing it in a few seconds. So I'm going to do the out connection from the um, from the wind helper and into the target, I'm going to do in connection here and connect it. Uh, right now, the eye has gone. You see the target has gone. I'm going to actually add a, a function to this. This small function is actually going to say uh, one minus i, and we will see in a second. It's actually reversing the selection, so we can see it right now, even if it's deselected. So this is for the uh, target. Now let's go into the actual function. Um, we're going to go into the function itself that I'm going to do on the helper. Uh, this is going to be a kind of a unique type of function. It's not something that we have went before on previous uh, lessons or previous webinars. So the first thing I wanna do in this, I'm actually wanted to define uh, the size of my spaceship. Uh, since I wanna make sure that I can hit the spaceship with my laser, I wanna make sure that I can define the size of the spaceship. I already did the calculation in advance but uh, let's write basically what it is. So I'm going to define um, six parameters. Um, one is going to be the, um, the position left and right of the spaceship, and then I'm going to define the size of it. Uh, and then I'm going to decide the point, the middle point, 
And the last thing, I'm going to define the laser itself um, so we can do all the calculation together. So we'll start with define. Um, by writing define, I will call it x1. x1 is just for me to write a definition in the, in the math function. It actually, I can use any other uh, text that I want to. Uh, just kind of logical. So I can say defined x1, and I want x1 to be a float. Um, a float is a number, it's a floating number basically between, uh, it can have any decimal point within size. It's not a Boolean number um, and it's not a path. Those are different types of um, uh, x of uh, Math, um, math operation that we can have. So in this case, I'm going to define a float. So it's gonna be a floating number and I'm going to take the I2. And if you can see here, I2 is the spaceship exposition. So I'm going to take the I2 and I'm going to do float I2 minus, and I know that my spaceship is around 3.5 uh, I don't remember exactly what, but I measured it as one point, it's almost four, 1.65. So that's gonna be my, um, my I2. The next thing I wanna do, and I will call it defined X2. So again, defined X2, and this is going to be, again, float. And I'm going to uh, make sure that I2, I'm going to be plus 1.65. Since my spaceship uh, is located directly in the middle, so uh, right side and left side. And now I, I define the right side and left side of the spaceship. Next thing will be the uh, top and bottom. So I'm going to do um, define, let's call this one Y1. And Y1 is going to go, you guessed it, it's going to be a float. And it's going to be I3. I3, as you can see, it's the spaceship Y position. So it's going to be I3 and I'm going, again, I'm going to do 0 0.45. The size is almost one, it was 0 0.9. So, uh, and again, Define y2, and this is going to be the uh, upper side. So again, float and i3 plus oops, sorry, plus 0 0.45. So now I have the definition of the width and height of the spaceship. Next thing I want to define the position where my target is going to be. Now, remember I told you about uh, the positioning I made here, the position and fix. Uh, since I want the actual object to start from the uh, bottom right side, which it's hard to see, but uh, the anchor point is right in the uh, bottom left side of my screen. Uh, in order to do that, I'm actually, I took the, um, the position, let's uh, see here, and you can see it's right here on the right. So I had to scale everything to uh, 16, and I had to move it to the bottom right, which was 0 0.4. And then I changed the uh, scale of the actual laser to fit the right coordinates the way I want it to be. I can make it uh, fatter or smaller just by changing the scale here. But this is the actual, um, this is what I actually want to calculate. So let's go back to my connection and I'm going to again do uh, define X. That's gonna be the X position. Um, so I'm going to do define X and X is going to be equal to the I, and again, I is internal connection. This time I'm going to um, duplicate by 16, which is the scale, uh, minus 8.4, which was the, the movement that we have moved to the side. 
And that is our uh, definition. And again, we're going to define the Y for the laser. So again, there's a lot of defines here. Define Y and that will be equal to, oh, sorry, I forgot here to add float. So So again, Y here is going to be, again, a, a float, and it's going to be I1. You can see I1 is the laser Y position. So I1, and after I calculate, it's going to be divided by 2 minus 1.5, which is the size of the ship. And now this is actually going to be our function. Now we're gonna do a one if function that's basically going to decide uh, that if that area is going to be activated, it's going to turn on or off the visibility for the wind helper. After that, we're going to use the manipulators in order to see how it's working. So I'm gonna start with if, and I'm going to say that, um, first thing I'm gonna use I3. I3 is the position. I want to make sure that it's not too low. So I'm going to say if I3 is bigger than uh, minus 2. Point, sorry, uh, 2.7, uh, that's going to be the minimal amount where a spaceship is going to be. So it, minus 2.7 right about here. So if the spaceship is lower than that, it's not going to explode it even if I fire it. So don't miss. Uh, then I'm going to do end. When I'm doing the end condition, it has to take all whatever I'm putting in as one consideration for uh, this statement to work. If not, it will not work. Everything has to be according to this statement. So I'm going to say if um, end, sorry, um, if x is bigger or equal, uh, 2x1, and if um, x is smaller or equal to uh, x2, which is our size, and if uh, y is bigger or equal uh, to y1, And if y is uh, smaller or equal than y2, if all this is correct, turn it into 1, make it visible. Uh, else, else, sorry, spelling mistake else I want it to be zero. So technically, if we don't hit it, it will be uh, zero. If I hit it, it's going to be uh, one. This is only going to see my visibility. Now, the next thing I already have here, the um, my, um, my manipulators, but I'm going to remove it just to show you what I'm doing. So technically, I'm going to do right click, add new manipulator. And I can tell this manipulator, I don't want to use any of the tab, drag, or hold. I'm just going to say that this manipulator can be on screen, and I can play with the horizontal and vertical of it. So when I grab it, I can grab it and move it. And we're going to see um, in a few seconds how it's going, in a few minutes, how it's going to be actually working. So my second manipulator is going to be for that reset. Since after I win, I want to have a reset for everything. And in this one, I just gave it a can tap. So I can tap it and it will trigger the manipulation. We're actually going to set up all the triggers that's going to tell uh, our application what actually is doing. So I'm going to open up my trigger window. And the first thing I'm going to say, I'm going to use the interaction. 
and I'm going to drag it into my details. In here, I'm going to say when manipulation begins. So when I uh, grab that manipulator, when it starts to do something, then I want, uh, here I have to tell him which one I'm using. So I'm going to use the uh, target aim. Uh, and now I'm going to do all the action that is going to, um, what will happen when I'm touching it. Technically, the only thing that I wanted to do is actually making sure it's not playing any of the other animations and continue with uh, the playing of the ship. So not, nothing will stop or look weird when we are moving it. So I'm just gonna use the animation and I'm gonna use, I think one, two, three, four, five of them. So I'm just gonna drag them in already. So it's gonna be slightly faster. So I'm gonna drag in five. I'm going to say for the first one, I'm going to make sure that the animation stops. And I wanna make which animation I want it to stop. And the first one is the laser. So when I'm moving it, I wanna show that the laser doesn't play. And I also wanna make sure it's rewind. So I'm going to do rewind that and rewind the laser. Same thing, I wanna make sure for the win. Uh, so I'm gonna do the stop here and change it for the win. And also in this one, I'm going to rewind. We're gonna use this animation quite a lot, you will see. And again, you win. And in my spaceship, I wanna make sure that my spaceship animation continues and doesn't stop or do anything. So I'm just gonna do animation continue for the ship. So I already have my first manipulation done. And again, to remind you when I'm going to tap on that manipulation, it's going to go to the trigger and start running whatever it's in the action. So this is the first one. I'm going to shrink it down so we can have more space here. So my second manipulation will be uh, when we are ending it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the interactive in this case, I wanna do when the manipulation end. So I'm gonna choose the end and I'm going to go into the target aim. And now I actually wanted to make sure that, um, what we wanna do now is that we wanna make sure that my laser cannon will actually move to where my uh, target is located. So in order to do that, I'm going to do the animation value. I'm gonna animate a value. So I'm gonna drag the animation value into it. And the first thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that I'm using the correct um, property. So I'm gonna go and look for my laser uh, gun. So I'm gonna take this X property and I'm going to drag it into where it says here the property that uh, we're going to change. I wanna make it the second input. So the first input will be when we tap on the uh, manipulator. So when we release, it's the second input and it will register uh, when this input has happened. I wanna go to a period of 50 frames. And in this case, I don't want any acceleration. I just wanna go straight into my um, into that position. So when I'm releasing now the manipulator, it will go directly to this uh, period in time and to uh, register the second input and will uh, animate to the correct position that I want. Now, the other thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that the laser is actually firing. So I'm gonna take this animation and I'm going to do the rewind and play for the laser and basically right now when I'm going to, um, uh, when I'm going to release the, the manipulator, it's going to move to wherever I decided and fire the laser. So let's close this again. So we'll have a little bit more uh, space. And now for the next one, the next one is actually for the helper. So in this case, we're going to use um, a parameter because we wanna manipulate the parameter of the, uh, of the wind helper. So I'm gonna drag in this parameter. And like we did before, we're going to decide to take here this uh, visibility. So we're going to take the parameter uh, visibility. 
And we're going to say when it's actually equals to turn off. So this one we're going to use while, you, while it's off, while nothing is actually happening, meaning we haven't won it. So when it's equal to zero, uh, I'm going to use the animation. It's basically, I wanna make sure that the other animation won't happen. So like we did before, I'm going to put here uh, four different animations. And this time I'm going to tell it that the uh, you win, uh, I'm going to do, like we did before, we're gonna do stop. And for the you win, I'm gonna be, make sure that it stops and it's rewinding. So I'm gonna do, and the same thing for the laser, I'm going to do stop and rewind. Rewind that uh, laser. So now we have when this object is not visible, when we missed our target, nothing will happen. Everything will run continuously, making sure that the animation of you win won't work and the uh, laser won't work. The next step, uh, we're going to use what happened when we do hit him. So when this win helper will turn into the visibility on. Now, if just to remind you, the visibility on is going to be set up by our function that we did a few minutes ago. So we're gonna do exactly the same. We're gonna use the parameter value and we're going to use the same parameter so when our visibility on, this time we're going to see um, visibility on and we're gonna use the uh, execute once. We just wanna make sure it happens only once. And in this case, I'm going to use the animation uh, for the win because we have won the game. So I'm gonna do rewind and play and do uh, you win. So it will play my, my you win. Uh, the next thing I'm going to make sure that my laser is actually stopping because I don't want to see the laser activating anymore. So I'm going to do, uh, like we did before, we're going to do uh, stop that animation for the laser. And the second will be rewinding this animation for the laser, making sure it's set up for the next one. Um, so technically all of those, uh, it's the basic that we, oh, sorry, one more thing, I almost forgot. We wanna make sure that our laser actually rewinds uh, at a certain point. So in this case, I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna use the animation time. So I'm gonna do, um, use the animation time and I'm going to say, I'm gonna play this laser. So it will give me the, um, and keyframe, and I, when this uh, animation, and I'm gonna use the animation, uh, the laser animation, and when I can use here, get current, that will give me my current keyframe that I'm on right now. So you can see it's 0 0.1 seconds. This is the correct, um, the event when we will, will happen. In this case, I just wanna make sure that my laser again uh, is set up to the beginning, just so we won't have any stuff, uh, some stuff happening that we don't want to. So again, we're gonna do rewind and we're going to do, oh, sorry, we're gonna do stop the laser and rewind the laser. Now, the last thing that uh, we wanna do is I wanna make sure that uh, I have my reset button so I can start everything all over again. So in this case, I'm going to use another interaction. I'm going to use the, in this case, tap. So when I'm tapping on the, uh, on the reset, it's going to trigger all the, these events. I'm just gonna close everything here slightly by double clicking, I can uh, uh, shrink them down again. And here I'm just going to set up everything to the beginning. So again, I'm gonna use a few animations. So let's do one, two, three, four, I think five animations to it. Um, first thing is stop and rewind. So I'm gonna do stop and rewind for the UN. I'm going to do 
this is the rewind for the UN. No, nope. sorry, my computer is slightly slow. I'm gonna do stop and rewind for the laser. So again, stop the laser and rewind it. And the last thing, I want the ship to actually start from the beginning. So I'm gonna do rewind and play for my ship. So now all my triggers are done. The last thing I need to do is I can actually make sure that manipulation is working. So I'll go and select my manipulator tool. And now when I'm moving, I can see that it moves, it fires, and I missed that chip right now. So again, uh, I can fire, I hit the ship, and let's hit it again. And I missed the explosion of it, but this one is how we are making it work. Um, so technically, this is how we're do, going to do it. The reset is going to reset everything. So let's just check again. It doesn't play my explosion animation. So we're going to reset it. This is how we build our, uh, our game. I think I uh, change a little of a bit of parameters while I do the test, so that's why we are slightly off. Uh, but this is our game. So this is how we built the interactive in uh, this specific uh, game. Um, now I'm going to show you a few more interaction that is actually more relevant to um, uh, to day to day. So one, we have uh, weather interaction. So like you can see here, we have the uh, weather broadcast. So by using the interactive, I can select an area. And of course, that will be connected to a database and it will give me the temperature uh, and everything for that area. So I can click it and de-click it. And again, the, uh, the idea is exactly simple. When I click this area, it's sending a trigger to uh, set the value for zero or one, in this case, France or Italy or whatever I'm choosing. So I can have it to change and to trigger other animations. And another great example is um, when we have an, a completely interactive that could be in an iPad or can be in a video wall uh, for elections. So we have the elections here. So uh, what I can do, I can uh, tap on the map here, select the year that I'm going to decide, sorry, map and select the year. So that will give me my map. Uh, I can tap on a state and uh, I can see the state. I can tap on it again and we'll, we'll animate back to the original. I can use a zoom here so I can zoom into a specific area, zoom out. Like you can see, I can zoom into any area that I decide. So this could be for the anchor to actually control on a touch wall or on an iPad and decide which area he wants to talk about. Actually, it will be the director that's going to tell him. Uh, we can see stuff like head to head, so I can show the uh, candidate one against candidate two. Of course, all this information will come from a database that is going to be connected either in Maestro News or Maestro Live or any application that controls that animation. I can show uh, social media and it will so see the show social media, uh, of course, again, connected to a database. I can use a photos, so, so I can tap on the, let's go back again, sorry, and to the photos, uh, photos refusing to work, so we'll go to the live, and I have, in this case, I'm just having a video clip running, but it could be a live, um, feed if I, I don't have my uh, HDVG connected, so I don't have a live feed coming through. 
Uh, in this case, I just put um, a clip, but it's gonna be, I can connect it to a live feed. Let's see if the photos will work again. No, all right, I gotta see here. But this is a, a typical idea of interactive for elections, for example. Uh, of course, we're gonna, you can use it again in sports to set up teams and other stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about uh, how we use the interactive workflow. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, this is the time and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, done. Thank you. Yep, I'm here. I'm here. Right. Glad we got the audio fixed there. So a great session okay. after that. <laughs> okay. Um, we did have a couple questions come in. Um, yep. The the screen you have up now, where you're showing the voting process, you said that's connected to Maestro News. Could be or Maestro News or Maestro Live. Uh, there is also uh, other options available, but our main uh, our main control application is Maestro Live and Maestro News. Inside Maestro Live and Maestro News, we have connection to databases. So all this information is going to be connected with an export to that database. Um, so you'll get all the information either live or from an Excel file or um, SQL files or whatever you're running, you'll get the information from there. All right, thank you. Um, another question, knowing that the animation for the game is based on your processor speed, what's the largest number of layers you've built? <laughs> well, uh, in my case, there is not a lot of layers and the process actually, this is a real time application. So you can uh, have quite a lot on it. Um, again, it really depends on and a lot of variables. It depends how big your mats are, your textures. If you have big textures, it will take more calculation. If you're using um, a lot of uh, PNG sequences or uh, sequences at all, uh, they take a lot more resources. So we have to be smart about how much we're going to use. But if we're technically talking about layers, I can have quite a lot of them. I don't want to say a thousand or uh, 50,000. It really depends what the layer contains and uh, how much um, information are on them. And my computer is not the best at the market. Um, it's quite a good computer, but it's not uh, the top of the line. So it can run quite nicely and whatever I'm putting on it. Yeah, next question. Awesome. Um, let's see, I'm scanning right now. If you have a question, go ahead and get it submitted now so we can make sure to get that asked for you. Um, I'll go ahead and while we're giving everyone a chance, I will post up our sessions for next week so that everyone can see those as well. Um, our, we do have a session tomorrow, sorry, with Media Composer. And then we have Sibelius and Maestro Designer uh, next week. Uh, so I'll just give everybody a chance to enter any questions. Um, as you know, this will be posted back to avid.com online learning webinars. Uh, if you have a topic you would also like our graphics team to explore or any of our other groups, please drop us an email at liveonlinelearning at avid.com and we'd love to get those posted and on the calendar for you uh, to take a look at. So I'm not seeing any questions at this time. So thank you so much for today's session. It was kind of cool to see the game being built out and how to really make these sessions more interactive. So thank you for that. And thank you for everybody uh, watching us around the world. So thank you so much and have a great day, afternoon, morning. Thanks, Yaron. Thanks, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.